Jesus said, the message is come unto me, all ye that labor, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Jesus said, to me.
Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm uh, Reverend McCullough of First Baptist Church of Jericho. For those of you who don't know me, I just want to take this opportunity to say today is a sad day, but it is also a good day. It's a good day that our brother has gone home to be with the Lord. We can cry and we can be sad for a moment. But we got some joy down on the inside, knowing that there's no more tears and suffering in his life. So as we prepare, I would just want to remind you, take your cell phone, please put it on silent or turn it off that we may not be disturbed. As we get ready to prepare for a homegoing celebration of our brother, we're going to have a congregational hymn and then the prayer of comfort by Reverend Jared Norman. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We are here to celebrate a life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Put your hands together. Bless the Lord. We're going to join in and sing together. Blessed assurance. Amen. Praising, praising my Savior all the day. 
Let's pray together. Precious Father, we come to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for your marvelous acts of kindness towards us. Father, we're grateful today. We're grateful, God, because you allowed our brother to share a long life with us, a life of love, a life of laughter, a life of joy, a life of service. We're grateful, God, for all the things you're doing. So now, God, we ask you to bless this family in a special way. Father, I ask you to comfort them, Holy Spirit, as only you can. Father, for the days, the weeks, the months, and the years to come, Lord Jesus, let the memories that our brother shared with them be ever present in their mind, the joy, the laughter, the love, because love never dies. We thank you, God, for this time. We ask you to bless them, keep them. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake we say amen. Thank God. Good morning, everyone. I know I was asked to read the scripture, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to say thank you, Jesus. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to say hallelujah. Oh, Brother Gilbert has comforted many of us through our sorrows. He's comforted many of us through our tears. He would be so happy to know that we would be here celebrating with him and for him because he's now with Jesus. He is or was so happy when we would rejoice, when we would have a good time in Jesus. You could see that big smile come on his face. Oh, he was quiet, but you knew inside he was happy. He was rejoicing. So let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give it up for Brother Gilbert. He didn't give it up for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we ain't going to be quiet up in here today. We're going to get it going now. We're going to get some shouting going up in here, some singing going up in here. I know the rain has subdued us, but it hasn't subdued our spirits. We have joy in the Lord, which is our strength. So family, take, take heart in knowing God is with us. God loves us. Whatever he does, he doesn't make a mistake. I just thank him, Lord, for, for the life that Brother Gilbert lived. I thank him for the smiles that he gave me, to the comfort that he gave to all of us and each of us. He was family to First Baptist Church, and you better act like it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will read for you now Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my sister, she set that tone, didn't she? Hi, right, family. God bless you. I'll be reading uh, Revelations 21, back of the Bible. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with 
them and be their God. And God uh, will wipe away every tear from their eyes and shall no more death, no, nor sorrow, nor crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And uh, he who sat on the throne, he who sat on the throne, and then I'm using my phone and it's trying to ring. He who sat on the throne, uh, behold, I make all things new. And he said uh, to me, write uh, these words and uh, are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. It is done. It is finished. And I'm going to get this last one out. I'm sorry for not using the Bible, using technology today. Okay. And he said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and I'm an Omega. I'm the beginning and I am the end. And I will uh, uh, give of the fountain of water of life freely to him that thirsts. He who is overcome shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Amen. May God add a blessing. You can read that again when you get home. Amen. Praise God. Our Old Testament scripture reading was by Minister Johnson, and our New Testament scripture reading was by Minister Bates. At this time, we're going to have a solo by Brother Larry Ebron, and then we will have expressions uh, representing the Joy Alliance will be Apostle Sandra Randall, and then we'll have friends Karen Cordy, Betty Archie, Cindy Parker, and Robert Green. Amen? Though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still the hope that lies within is reassured As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he lead me safely to the blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't see, And if the winds, they keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in, in the Lord. Though the storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still the hope that lies within is reassured as I keep 
my eyes upon the distant shore I know he lead me safely to the blessed place he has prepared but if the storms don't cease and if the winds they keep on blowing in my life my soul has been anchored in in the Lord Whoa. I realize that in this life we're gonna be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce but in the word of God I've got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast and unmovable despite the time but if the wind they keep on blowing in my life and just in case the winds they keep on blowing in my life my soul my soul been anchored in in the Lord in the Lord my soul, my soul, my soul been anchored in, 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 in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, Lord. the winds may blow, the breakers may dash, I will not fret. Because it hold me fast No darker day The Lord's alright yeah. Cause Jesus is mine Say my soul My soul My soul My soul My, 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 my my soul, my soul, my soul been anchored, been anchored in the Lord. Thank you, God.
I am here on behalf of Joy International Alliance. My brother, you sang that song. My soul is anchored in the Lord. And it sounds like Brother Gilbert's soul was anchored in the Lord. So I give honor to Pastor Gatling. to Reverend McCullough, to all those who honor is due. And I come on behalf of the alliance that Apostle Judy is a part of, his sister. Truly, I am honored to be here just thanking and praising God for his goodness and his mercy. And as I'm here, I'm sure she told you, I'm going to read um, what she spoke to our Apostle Janine Griffin and told her a little bit about um, her brother Gilbert Colber. So on behalf of all the clergy and ministers that are here, truly we extend our heartfelt sympathy to the, the Colber family, to Apostle Judy, the Cromedy family, to all, to Gilbert Junior, and we walk this journey with you, and we've been praying for you, and we know that the family has had a lot of death within a year's time. But know that God has you. As someone else said, he never makes a mistake. And so we all have a date and time that we must meet our Father. That's why we work here while it is day, for when night comes, no man can work. So he was a servant of the Lord, and we're here just to support you, to let you know we love you. And if there's anything that we can do beyond here, I'm sure Pastor Gatlin, who pastored your brother, your father, will be there for you as well. So we thank and praise God. Grace and peace to you, my family and friends. May his peace be with you till we meet again, till we reach that distant shore and will shed a tear no more. May he give you strength to endure till we meet again. When we reach that promised land, we'll walk hand in hand. May he give you strength to stand till we meet again. May his love be with you till we meet again, till we walk the streets of gold where we'll never grow old. You'll find rest for our soul when we meet again. God is with you. Keep on keeping on, Gilbert. Family and friends, Whereas God, in his infinite wisdom, sought to call home Gilbert F. Coble Sr., we submit these words to you, his family and friends. It feels like just a moment ago, your voice was an everyday melody in our lives. We are overwhelmed as our hearts cannot help but ache in your absence. There is an empty spot yearning for the familiarity of you just being there to talk to. Close to the surface, there is a real and penetrating sense of sorrow and loss. How often, how then do we navigate the challenge of life without your physical presence? We find rest cradled by the arms of our Savior. It is through his unmatched love that we are shielded from life's harshest blows. The wise have always known that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And though what is given may also be taken away, our song of praise for him will never cease. Our faith is anchored in him steadfast against the shadows of mourning. 
For in the light of his love, we find a safe haven. In the very heart of turmoil, it is God's unwavering goodness that our soul finds its true sanctuary. And we discover profound peace. For he sits high and looks low. He is all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-powerful. He is our sovereign Lord. And that which we can't walk through, he will carry us through. Cobo family, know he's going to carry you through. As if on wings of an eagle, that which we can, the tears we cry, he will dry. The strength we lose, he will revive. It is he who restores our joy, renews our mind, and strengthens our walk. What then shall we say to this? If God before us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Whereas our father, grandfather, brother, uncle, cousin, and friend, our beloved Gilbert F. Cobalt Sr. leaves us all with the challenge of living a life that testifies of itself. Our effect and effect on people places things that cannot be any more or less than what we have made an effort to do in the life we have lived. In remembering him, we all must think about what will be said about us when it is our time to pass this way. For this time will surely come. What will be the legacy that we leave as a memorial in the hearts of others to celebrate and cherish? What will they say about how we have lived and loved? My God, my God, my God. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Gilbert F. Colbert Sr., the doorkeeper. He left the legacy, I hear, of ushering others into the household where the presence of love, family, and friendship could be experienced. And we saw the ushers honor him. And the, his expression of service will transcend time. For we recognize that God gave many we may never know, an opportunity to be blessed by his welcome. His words of encouragement and conviction will always live in the hearts and minds of the multitude of family and friends who knew him and loved him. Therefore, be it resolved today to his family, Apostle Judy, Mother Coble, Gilbert Jr., the nieces and nephews, and all of you on this day, be it resolved that today you, his family, Gilbert F. Coble Sr., has found his peace in a realm where fear is a stranger, where the wicked shall cease from troubling, and our weary souls will be and one day, we will meet again. 
in that place of boundless love where the joy of the Lord reigns supreme and, the, and join hands in a circle of unity, that place, our voices merging with the heavenly chorus around the divine. My soul is anchored. Yes, it is. Until then, we hold on to the promised reunion, cherishing the day when we will see him again. Therefore, knowing that the battles have ceased and the victory is assured, in reverence as we whisper our farewells, we, the officers and members of the Joy Village International Worship Center and the Joy International Alliance Incorporated, stand in agreement with our own Apostle Judith Cromedy and her family as we bow in humble submission to the Father and his immeasurable wisdom. We offer this resolution to the family of Gilbert F. Cobalt Sr. this third day of April in the year of our Lord 2024. A copy of the resolution will be perpetually held in the archives of the Joy Village International Center and the Joy International Alliance and a copy given to the family. With peace of God, it surpasses all understanding respectfully submitted by Apostle Janine Griffith from the Joy International Alliance. And may the Lord continue to bless you and comfort you and grant you the peace that only he can give. God bless. Thank you. Good morning. The connection between the Coble and the Allen family goes back many years. Gilbert and his brother and sister-in-law, John and Irene, and later, excuse me, Mr. John and Miss Irene, and later their nephew, Robert, who is our God brother, lived two doors away from us. Gilbert and his sisters, Arnita, Doreen and Judy would often visit their family from the city of Woodbury, which meant we had company too. Gilbert became fast buddies to our older siblings and always stopped by for what he called chit chat. There was plenty of fun and much laughter in our little house during his visits. We younger siblings eavesdropped, snickered at the lively banter, and came to know Gilbert as another one of our brothers. And you know how older brothers can sometimes be, always teasing. Well, that was Gilbert. So sisters Lorraine and Judy, if Gilbert never teased you, trust me, we carried your load. As the years progressed, frequent visits from Gilbert eventually ended, but we always heard of his successes, his marriage, a new home, the birth of his son, Gilbert Jr., and his grandson. I appreciated how Gilbert seemed to get the good, reputable jobs. One job that made me feel so proud of him was a job at a well-known, to this day, grocery store in the Woodbury area. Proud, you ask? Well, because at that time, not many of us were given such opportunities. He went on from there getting other well-to-do jobs. The last known to me was with our own Bagwell Funeral Home. Another proud of him moment for me. All I could think when I saw him in service was, Gilbert, my brother, you did it again. Gilbert will be remembered as genuine, a down-to-earth, 
warm and friendly person with an infectious laugh who loved laughter. Gilbert, a person of integrity, loved and cared for his family, his friends, his church family, his ushers, and his Lord. If you spent any time with Gilbert, you always left feeling better about yourself and the issues of life. He will be remembered as an excellent example of responsibility to his family, to his work ethics, to his community, and Gilbert will be remembered as a trusted, compassionate, and true friend that you could depend on. To my extended family, to Bob, I didn't forget you. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior continue to bless and keep you, especially during this time of bereavement. Thank you, family. Morning to my extended family. I have my deepest sympathy. A family is a family. There are friends, but there are friends that become family. And I want to thank the Coble family for letting me be a part of your family for 30 plus years. I first met Gilbert in a bowling league, did not know that I would soon meet his wife, which became my best friend. We met at Gloucester County College at a night class. She beckoned me to come sit by her, and I did. We exchanged phone numbers. We were trying to get in the nursing program, and when we did get in, accepted to the program, she called me, and she said, I don't drive. Can I get a ride? Well, that ride turned into me being in the Coble household for two years, sitting at the kitchen table, studying our nursing program. And from that point forward, I met Gilbert's family and her family, and we became one big family. He was a friend. He will be missed. His love was Caden and Frankie. And I love you guys, and I want you to know that it's not the years that count. It is the memories that we hold in our hearts. May God continue to bless you, and always remember, I am still your family. God bless you. God love you. Coming up here on behalf of the um, ushers, I'd like to extend from the ushers our sincere um, We're here for you. Just know that. Gilbert was a faithful usher. I could always depend on him to be here. Even when he wasn't feeling well, he would come and usher every fourth Sunday. He would be here. I would sit there back there with him. I said, hey, Gilbert, you want to sit down for a little bit? You can sit down. No, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. I said, you sure? Yeah. But he was faithful. And we will, as the usher boys of this church, we would really, really miss him. Now I want to note on about bowling. He was on my team. We bowled for many, many years together. Me, him, and Bobby Green. He was the first bowler, that we, the strong one is the first one, one of the strong ones, then we had the middle one, and we had the one that was real strong, but I'm not going to tell you who that was. <laughs> it could have been Bobby, but Bobby couldn't handle the pressure, so I had to do it, okay? <laughs> but I just want to say, family, we're here for you. 
We love Gilbert, and we will really miss him. Good morning, church. I'm not going to rebel on that. My, my sister back here is talk, talking about me. But uh, I just want to know, I just want to say that the Green family and the Cobra family knew each other for almost from day one. We, we had very disciplined parents, very religious parents, and me and Gilbert, we went through school together. We went to elementary school. We went to high school, graduated, and after graduation, Gilbert disappeared on me. I think he went south or something like that for playing, playing football and stuff. Him and my brother Suter, where's Suter at? He was in here. Oh, he must have left. Oh, okay. Brother Suter and, and Ed Rothmiller, they were the three stars out there on the football field, track, and, and the rest. I couldn't join them because Mom wouldn't let me join. I'm not as fast as they are anyhow. But anyhow, uh, with Gilbert, after, after high school, we went separate ways. We, I got, we got married, kids, responsibilities, and stuff like that. So we couldn't hang out or nothing like that. Cause, and thank God we couldn't because we both were a little bit immature. You know how men are when they're 18, 19, 20 years old. They need direction. And so... I went my way, he went his way, and then the last 20 years of our lives, of Gilbert's life, we came back together. And every time I see Gilbert, we can come together, embrace one another, and he's always in the same mood. He, he, he was good. I mean, he, he was the kind of guy that you would love to have around you. And I told Gilbert, you know, our friendship will never break. So I'm just saying, I could say a lot of different things about Gilbert, but he mostly already said it. He was a true man, and I loved him to my heart because I would come to him with some problems. I don't think he'd come to me. We both had our problems, but it seemed like I had, well, now we are weak. We always had, your problems ain't bad as mine, you know, so you listen to me. And Gilbert was always encouraging to me. And we went, even after work, we went to uh, different restaurants first, first Friday of every month to have breakfast together, about four or five or six of us. And we did that for a good while. And then I, uh, it, he got me to join the bowling. Well, I was bowling already, but he got me to bowl to, over to the, to the we was We was, we was partners in the, in the bowling team. And every time, when he stopped bowling, we would talk every day. Ask me, he would ask me, how did I do last night? Or something like that. But he was, he was a great guy. And this is not my forte, but I'll tell you what, I had to say something for Gilbert. He's, he was a great man, and I know he knew who God is, because we come out of a religious family, and I know who he is, too. Sometimes I was a little hard on myself trying to find out who he really is, but I know now that I will see Gilbert on the other side. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We're now going to have uh, the reading of acknowledgments, uh, resolutions, and the obituary, and then we will have a selection. To the Coble family, beloved of God, grace, peace, and love to you in the name of the God of all comfort. We greet you in the name that is above every other name, Jesus. The songwriter is right, it is ever so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word. First Baptist is praying that God will help you and your family through this difficult time of loss. 
It really does not matter if the loss is sudden or expected. It can be overwhelming with grief. Be patient and give yourself time and space to heal. And please be real with the Lord about your pain. The pastor, officers, and the entire church family of First Baptist Church of Jericho join together in expressing our deepest sympathy in the passing of our member and your loved one, Gilbert Franklin Coble Sr. However, we also rejoice at his home going, for we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord for all who are the children of the Most High God. Be encouraged today, knowing that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We will continue to pray that God's special comfort will strengthen and keep you and ultimately give you a peace about situations and circumstances you face in this life that the world cannot provide. In the fellowship of this faith, we extend a loving hand of sympathy and understanding and want you to know that First Baptist Church of Jericho stands ready to comfort and assist you in any way we can. May God bless you and keep you always in his loving care. Sorrowfully submitted, Pastor, officers, and members of First Baptist Church of Jericho. Derek V. Gatling, Senior Pastor. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Isaiah 41.10. May you sense God's loving hand and be comforted. Mr. and Mrs. James McClellan. With heartfelt sympathy, and caring prayers for you and your family. The Lord is near the brokenhearted. Psalms 34, 18. May the gift of time and God's presence and love help bring healing through this time of loss. Thinking of you, our prayers are with you. Norris and Paulette Cooper. We're so sorry for your loss. Our hearts reach out in deepest sympathy in the loss of one who meant so much to you. With sympathy, Jack Pierce and family. Beyond life's gateway, there's an open gate at the end of the road through which each must go alone. And there, in a light we cannot see, our father claims his own. Beyond the gate, your loved one finds happiness and rest, and there is comfort in the thought that a loving God knows best. May the same God who has welcomed your loved one home keep you in his care through this difficult time. Lorraine and family and nanny. Time is God's gift. We all need a time to grieve, quiet time for reflection, to sift through memories and come to grips with what has happened. To everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to heal. Ecclesiastes 3, 1, 3. We all need time for tears, not for the one who is now at peace with God in heaven, but for ourselves as we realize that things will never be the same. We all need a time to just to be, when we can feel the comfort and reassurance that God's everlasting love brings to heal our hearts. Praying God's peace and comfort for you and your loss. Sincerely, Brenda Keeg and family. Remembering their beautiful song. God gives every person their own unique song. It's one that will play their entire life long. Through the love that they give and the gifts that they share, through that memories that they make and the dreams that they dare, it's a song filled with beauty and day-to-day -day grace that plays through until they see God face to face. A song that is heard in the heart loud and clear. A song, if we listen, we'll always still hear. What a beautiful way to celebrate them through the song they lived, the song they'll, you'll carry forever in your heart. In sympathy and prayer, God bless Betty and family. I'm going to now read the obituary. His story, a time for family. On November 18th, 1936, Gilbert Franklin Coble 
was the first fruit born to the late Pastor George F. and Florence H. Coble in Woodbury, New Jersey. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. As they welcomed him into the world, along with his twin, Albert, who passed at birth. It would be the beginning of a blended family with his other siblings, Ruth, John, and James. A time to learn. Gilbert received his formal education in the Woodbury public school systems. He was always involved in athletics, running track and playing football for the thundering herd. Student aid, track, varsity, sports manager, and basketball. You would certainly find him, Eddie Roth Miller, Matthew Singleton, Lem Smitter throughout the Sundial yearbook. His activity in sports landed him and others in the southern states to play football. Unfortunately, the South was not as accepting as it should have been. A time to work. Upon returning home, he was employed by the Underwood Hospital, where he worked for several years as an orderly and assisting in autopsies. He was also employed by Sickle Supermarket and from there to IGA Supermarket. A Time to Love. While being employed at the Underwood Memorial Hospital, he met and married Rosalind Sharper of Paulsboro, New Jersey. In the year of 1968, he met Bessie Moore, a native of Peoria, Illinois, who migrated to Philadelphia. They were married in June of 1969, and their multiplication of fruitfulness brought their one and only son, Gilbert Franklin Jr. At Bessie's passing, they would have been married for 48 years. Bessie was always looking for improvement, so they moved from Woodbury to Winona, New Jersey to this present time. He loved his family and would call his niece Nikki when he wanted a good laugh, a time for fun. Gilbert was an avid bowler and bowled in the nicotine league for many years, earning his ring. His love for bowling caused him to take all of his old balls and make a shrine in his side yard, lined up like flower bushes. Every Monday night, you can find him at the bowling alley until he was not able to bowl, but would go and sit just to be in the midst with his partners and friends. Watching football for him was like going to church for some people. He did not miss watching football games. A time to serve. He accepted the Lord after a strong but brief conversation with his sister Judy. Following that, he became a member of First Baptist Church of Jericho under the pastorate of Pastor Clay Bogan in 2006. He began to serve on the usher board and continued until his death. He loved the usher board and those he served with. A time for reward. On Wednesday, March 20th, 2024, his spirit took flight and he went home to be with the Lord. Many memories he leaves for us to cherish. He leaves to continue his legacy. His son, Gilbert Jr. of Winona, grandson, Caden, three, sisters, Arnita Coleman, deceased, Edith Lorraine Coble of Woodbury, Judith Coble Crumpty of Clayton, five nieces, Brenda Johnson, Gwen Waples, Carmen Wilkins, Nika, Nikki, Crumpty, and Lisa Troutman. Two nephews, Robert Coble Sr., Janice, Troy Coleman, two brothers-in-laws, Joe Moore of Peoria II, Norman Powell, Philadelphia, PA, and a host of nieces and nephews, extended family, Gregory Collins, Betty Archie, Sandy, and Ardina Hamilton. Hamilton, lovingly submitted the family. How many of us know that God constantly writes down our life? He writes down the good deeds as well as the bad deeds. 
in our lives. I want to share this song that speaks to the journey of the believer to stay focused. During the Christian walk, there are times that we feel like it's not worth it all. Amen? Amen. There's times that we feel like we're not sure if this is going to pay off in the end. But how many of you know we got stock in Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. And as God is writing down everything that we do and what we say, we never know whose lives we touch or whose souls we reach. And I want you to just listen to these lyrics. It says, For we may never know all the people we have touched. For we may never, never know all the lives that we had reached. But we know that God knows for a record he does keep and in the end does finally begin we shall receive a great reward for what we've done or we may never know all the people we had we may ne never know all the lives that we had reached, but we know that God knows that for a red curtain does keep and mean the end. That's why we begin, we shall receive a great. For what we done, uh, for we may ne never know all the people we have touched. For we may ne never know all the lives that we have reached, but we know you know. For her red could you to keep and win the end. That's fine, the begin. We shall receive a great reward for what we've done. We'll receive great reward for what we've done. We'll receive a great reward for what we've done. All the good things we'll receive for great reward for what we've done. God's keeping a record. We'll receive a great reward for what we've done. It's not a thing, it's not a thing. You'll receive a great reward. Reward for what you've done. You'll receive a great reward. For you may ne never know all the lives that you have touched. Or we never know, we never know, we never know all the lives that we have reached. But we know that God knows for her anger. He does keep and we in the end does finally begin. We will receive. Gilbert has received. We will receive. Brother Gilbert has received. We will receive. He has received, we will receive. Brother Gilbert has received, we will receive. Hold on, my brother, hold on. He will receive. Stay strong in Jesus Christ, we will receive. It's going to pay off after a while. You will receive 
a great reward for what you've done. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. At this time, we're going to have a uh, special tribute by nieces and nephew Carmen Wilkins, Nikki Cromley, and Robert Coble Sr., and also then by siblings uh, Lorraine and Judy, and then son Gilbert Jr. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the pastor of this church and the official board and the visiting ministers that are here today. Just want to say good morning. Um, this is very hard for me to say a few words about my uncle. Um, my uncle Gilbert, for as long as I can remember in my life, was always a constant presence. He was a quiet, soft-spoken man. Didn't have, you know, a lot to say, but whatever you said to him, trust and believe it was confidential and that he would always say, like, I understand. Um, some of the moments that I want to share with you that stood out in my mind um, about my uncle today was um, the day he met and married my Aunt Betsy. The day that he became the proud father of Frankie. I just want to say to you, Frankie, he was very proud of you and all your endeavors that you did. Supported you and always was just like, I'm proud of my son. Another proud moment of his life was when he welcomed Caden and Frankie being married to Charlotte. His parents was so proud to have us daughter-in-law, and then Caden came along and had a grandson. And he just, you know, you would ask him, you know, Uncle Gilbert, how are you? He'd be like, I'm fine. I'm good. But he always just always had pleasant words to say, you know. And there was a side to him that the other side of the family might have seen, but for me, he was always cool as a cucumber. <laughs> Our conversations was meaningful, quiet, but well-spoken. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him dearly. But another moment that I think that we all have reflected on was the day that he accepted Christ into his life. And he became a member of First Baptist Church. i never forget the conversation that when he was just inviting his family to come when he was baptized to see him as he took on his new walk of life, being a Christian. <sighs> wow. I'd say to say to you that, you know, through the many things that he encountered through his life, we had an inside joke with the family that we were laughing. He complained he had a pain here. Ain't my, my back or whatever. But I must say, through it all, he was a soldier. He stood strong and he endured whatever he faced. Well, I say to you today that he would be missed. He would be missed dearly by his friends, by his family, by his nieces, by his nephews. Um, it's going to be a hard thing to feel without him having around because he's just, he would just show up. 
you know, um, every night I would talk to my aunt. Counts Uncle Gilbert. Counts Uncle Gilbert. And I have to catch myself now. Uncle Gilbert's not here anymore. But I do know where he is. I do know that he's at peace. And I do know that he's in heaven with the rest of his family. But my, but my grandparents, my other aunts and uncles that have gone on, and just a few months ago, my mom, and I, I know, I know he's at peace. But I just want to share this with you and my closing as my remarks I made about my uncle. Um, to my uncle, I say a prayer for you to thank you, to thank the Lord above for blessing me for a lifetime of your tender heart love. I thank God for the care you showed me through the years, for the closeness we enjoy in the time of laughter and the time of tears. And so, I thank you from the heart for all you had done for me. And I bless the Lord for giving me the best uncle that you could ever be. Thank you. I'm glad my cousin went first. So glad she went first. I'm a little nervous up here, but... Um, <clears throat> Me and Uncle Gilbert, um, as you all know, I'm Nikki. So if you don't know, you now you know. So um, Uncle Gilbert would call me, you know, he would just call me. He was like, and when he called me, I always thought, you know, I said, Uncle Gilbert, you, are you saying Nikki? Because I always thought that he was, he sounded like he was saying nigga. And I said, Uncle Gilbert. <laughs> you know, so, but... um. I begin as I, be, I remember a man that would call me, he would just call me late at night just to get a laugh. He would say, Nikki, make me laugh. And we would talk about family, we would talk about skirts, and we would talk about life. Now, you want to know what skirts were? The skirts were the women. They were. They were women. We talked, but we talked. And that's how we talked. He would ask me, Nikki, do you still think I got it? I said, Uncle Gilbert, I know you got it. <laughs> he was like to, he liked to dress up, he liked to be sharp, and he was like, you know, Nikki, does this match? I said, yes, Uncle Gilbert, it matches. That matches, this matches. My uncle also loved to usher. My uncle asked questions, and over and over again, I would give him the same answer over and over. I said, I guess it comes with age. I remember when my uncle started ushering. He told me that he couldn't make his turns while he was marching. So what did I do? I came to his house, and we practiced marching and his turns outside on sunny days. We laughed at each other until he finally got it. He enjoyed ushering so much that it cost me my car getting told one day. He calls me and he says, Nikki, I said, yes, Uncle Gilbert. He said, I had to go over Philly. I said, well, what you need to go over Philly for? You know, I need to get a tie and I need to get a handkerchief. So I said to him, well, you know, well, we can do that right here in Jersey. No, 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 Nikki. You don't understand. I need to go to Philly to get a tie and a handkerchief. So I said to him, okay, we go over Philly, we go get a tie, we go get a handkerchief, but we come outside and there's no car. So my car got stolen. It didn't get stolen. I'm sorry, it got told. So these are just some of the memories of my Uncle Gilbert. And I'm going to miss him because he would wake me up late at night just for a laugh.
I love you, Uncle Gilbert. And I just want to say, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. As I called him, he made me laugh all the time. To the ushers, he loved each and every one of you. He, he spoke about you often, and he loved serving here. That was his service to God. He was so thankful to be in this service. So your tribute this morning was heartfelt by all of us in the family, and we thank you for serving today. We are the children of Lafayette Coble, freed as a slave at 13 a, share crop, a sharecropper and bought a farm in Durham, North Carolina, where he raised 12 children. We are the children of George Coble, and this is where the anchor dropped, who was a righteous man of God. He raised seven children. We are the children of Ruth, James, John, Anita, Gilbert, Judy, and our beloved Aunt Lorraine. We are the children who will not forget the shoulders on which we stand or the sacrifice, the joy, the sorrows, the pride, the dreams of those who have gone before us. We are the children of that dream. And someday, our children will say, we are. We are thankful to God because I can tell you now where the Bible tells us that where a righteous man who speaks to God, the family changes, generations changes. That was my grandfather. He changed the trajectory of this family because of his faith, because of his prayers. I come from this church. I was born here. I was raised here. And they raised men. They raised men, and we stand on the word of God just as he taught us, as my father taught me. So thank you. Thank you for honoring our family. Thank you for loving on our cousins. Thank you for being part of our family. Thank you. My heart is broken on today. Gilbert was not just only my brother, but he was my friend. He was my all in all, all around. Whenever I need him, he was right there. He's at my house. 
every day. I think every day. You call on the phone. Let's see, every night during the day. And when I need something done, he'd be there. I think about the time when, you know, he's quite himself sometimes being a handyman. He liked tools. And he carried tools around in his car. And he would come to my house and, and of, um, he would fix, fix things. He thought he'd fix things. <laughs> That's it. He thought he'd fix things. It was one day when my sister was at the house. And she was going to, she's putting up a shelf for me. My brother came in. He thought that he would help her. <laughs> that was a mess. He had his screwdriver and, and uh, he, he just tore up my wall. He said, okay. He ran home, he said, they're trying to put the shelf up. The shelf wouldn't stand up, the shelf wouldn't hold up. So he said, I'm going to go home. He went home, brought back some boards. And then, he na- then he nailed the boards up there. We got the shelf up there. The shelf was crooked. Somebody came to my house and said, Lorraine, your, your shelf is crooked. He said, uh, that's all right. But, you know, I couldn't let her stay like that. So I had to get somebody to fix it. But one thing, you know, sometimes my brother got on my nerves. But one thing that irked me, my sister had a key my brother has a key to my house. But my brother never, he never knocked on the door. Told her to take the key from me. I always can see, I, every time I hear, I hear the click. <coughs> Here he is, he come walking in. But I miss him. And also he would call up and say, hey, hey, the rain. Do you, uh, do, do you know, the, does Sickle have this, and does Acme have this? And I said, yeah, but I don't know. You have to go down there and see. Then he always know, he, my brother, he loves sweets. So he always know where, call me up and say, hey, the rain, you got any cake? So I said, yeah. He would come up and get the cake, so because he's gonna have football. Football was coming on, and so he got to have some sweets. So I gotta get me some ice cream. Now I'm gonna go to the store and get me some ice cream. So I said, I made some ice cream and cake. And then he would say, he would call me up and say, you know, he would cook something, cook. But then he would call me up and say, Hey, the rain, I'm gonna come cook me some fish. I said, Gabriel, what day you want me to come? So it'll be on a Friday, and I cooked him some fish. And then he would say, he would say, make sure you get a piece. I already knew I'm going to get a piece. (laughs) Amen. But he was just that. My brother was just a loving person. He had a good personality. But I never would have thought it. Monday, I had taken him to, to the ER because his knee was swollen and I had fluid on his knee. And so I went to, took him to the hospital to get the fluid off his knee. And then I talked to him on Monday night and I asked him, he said, you know, he felt good. But then I talked to him on Tuesday. Tuesday during the day, 
But then one on a Wednesday, when his son called and said, my dad, my dad's passed. I could not believe it. I could not believe it. But I know he's out of his pain and out of his suffering. Because I know because so many times that the pain that he was in and all that he went through. But I know he's there in a better place. But I'm so sorry that we never got a chance to say goodbye. On today, I say to my brother, I love you. May you rest in peace one day. We shall meet again. As a sibling, as a sibling, my brother, she didn't get all of it. I got a lot of it too. And so as my brother would call, whenever he felt like picking up the phone, he said, hey, Judy, X, Y, and Z. I said, all right, Delta. We were partners in crime. I'm, I'm going to tell you that. We were partners in crime coming up. And a lot of folks probably didn't know that, but I knew that my mother and my father probably knew that. But I would follow my brother around sometimes and some of the things that he was doing, I wanted to do. And so and in doing that, I had to get him out of some certain situations. So that means I had to be the witness of what he was doing and tell the truth. And one particular time he had a certain situation that needed a witness. And I said, I can't say that. I, can't, I, I just can't say that. You know? So as a brother, you know, I loved my brother. But, and any time that he would ask me to do something, I would do it. But this one time I said, listen, you on your own on this one. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't help you with this one. But knowing who he was, and, and so much so that... Uh, um, I even went to the barber shop to get my hair cut one time. And so, and when I did go there, the barber cut all my hair off. Y'all know Arthur Lewis. And he said, oh, now you and your brother really look like twins. I'm talking because I'm talking as, 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 as a, uh, you know, as a sibling, as a sister. And so I went home and, and I went home and I walked into the door and my mother looked at me and I thought she was going to go under the porch because she was just still that upset. And so a lot of times, you know, you, and you didn't, you didn't drive Gilbert's car, except if you were doing something for him. So I got an opportunity to drive his car one time because I was doing a favor for him. <laughs> and then there was other times, I mean, all these times of reflections of that, you know, that we are sharing with you today, that our, 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 our brother, our, our, she's the one that really spoiled him. I said, you got it, because I'm not spoiling him like that. <laughs> but he would call me, and when he would call me at night, we started out with other different kind of conversations. And so his son had just had his room done over um, a few, maybe it was last year, that he had his room done over. And so then he asked me if I would help him design this room. Well, I did that. And what I put in there, he said, I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't, Lorraine, why she buy this? Why? I said, listen, just give me my money for doing what I'm doing. That's all. Just, just, just pay up. Just give me my money. <laughs> <laughs> and so all the different kind of situations and different times and that he would call and that we would talk about a lot of things. And one of the things is that we would talk about the word of God. And as we began to talk about the word of God, he began to just ask me different questions, different questions. But back there in 2006, when he uh, accepted the Lord, you know, the Lord sent me to his room, sent me to that hospital room. And when I went and walked into the door, I said, are you ready? He said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm ready. There are things in life that will cause you to want to cry out to God. And so he said that he was ready. And so I said, all right, well, let's go. And right after that, and when he came right here and started serving, and so, you know, looking at him and listening to him and the times that we would laugh, and I'm going to date you on this one right here. Uh, it was about two weeks ago, I think, I, we were at his house, and I was coming out the door, and I had, was I was dressed, but I was dressed in a pair of, I don't know what it was, a pair of jeans or anything. I had these knee highs on. Gilbert loved the dress. We loved the dress. And so he looked at me and he said, he, he was great for telling me if, you, if I gained a little bit of weight, he was good for telling me that. 
What's wrong with you? You gain a, you gain a little weight. So I had these things. I didn't think nobody would really see him, but he saw him. He said, what you doing with the mom lazy stock and so on? I said, <laughs> I said, what you say? And he just laughed, he laughed, he laughed. And I think that was the very, the last laugh, hearty like that, that I seen him laugh that hard. And I said, oh, well, you really trying to date me. We're not going to go there. But he, he, all the time, all the time, all the time, it was always conversations. And he just said, hey, what about this? He hang up and call back again. Hang up and call back again. And half of her refrigerator, her freezer, belongs to him. Because cake is in that freezer. <laughs> he know where to go when he needed it. He know where to go. And so we just, you know, we loved him. We have seen the good. We seen the bad. All of that. All of that. But we still love and we are still family. We will miss him because every day we talk to him. It's just like, I guess, husband and wives that would... You know, you're with that husband and you're with that wife. And so every day, you, you know, they're in your face. You're in their face. And so and that's how it was with him. And so we loved, we do love them. He was our one and only brother that was left. And so, Robert, family, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Gilbert Coble Jr., his one and only son. And I want to start off by saying thank you to everyone here, and even those who aren't here, maybe joining us on the live stream. I want to keep it general because inevitably I'll forget someone and they will get in their feelings, and we don't want that. So I will say a general thank you. You know who you are if you reached out and given us a hand or donated or even just gave us a consolation. So thank you again. Thank you for all the kind words that you have said about my father. He was someone who did the best he could, the best that he knew how. Through it all, he did teach me how to become a man. He was an example, and still is actually, an example of what a provider is. And I've learned much from him. We have lots of fond memories. Some of my earliest memories that were taking rides with him. That's something I still do today with my son, Kay, and his grandson, whom he loves. Also, before we had, they didn't get air conditioning. They didn't get central air in the house until after I went off to college. But, <laughs> but uh, in those early days, my mom was off to work, and we would just sit on the floor in front of the fan listening to the Phillies game on the radio. Very fond memory. I'm not going to keep you long. We have other memories as well that I prefer between myself, him, and God. Very fond memories indeed. But I'll be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity in time to remind you that time is short. We had a tradition after my mom passed of saying, I love you and good night to each other. And you would hug Caden. Every once in a while, he would miss it, or for whatever reason, he'd be very upset if he didn't get a chance to give Caden a hug goodnight. I'm glad that we got a chance to say, I love you, and got that hug from Caden on that Tuesday night. Because that Wednesday morning, he was no longer with us. Now, what many of you did not see is that he was in a lot of pain. 
And so if you don't see me crying, it's because I know his suffering is over. Only the mortal body remains, but the soul is eternal. And so I want to remind you again that time is short. Please focus on what matters. Focus on love. Focus on loving those around you, whether you agree with them or not. Focus on your families, because in the end, that's all we have. And last but not least, before I leave the podium today, focus on your eternal soul. Again, your eternal soul, work on it. There are others here today, feel free to see them, who are much more prepared or rather qualified, I should say, to talk about how you should go about doing that. But I implore you to do so. My dad was not a perfect man. None of us are. But I can tell you that he worked very hard on his eternal soul. And so again, I don't shed tears because I know he's with Jesus, because I know he was a work in progress and he was going towards that goal, but he did accept. And so again, I want to remind you, that time is short. Thank you again for your support. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to have a solo by Brother Larry Ebron, and then we'll have our eulogy by Pastor Derek Gatling and Apostle Judith Crumley. Amen. Yes. I reach, oh Lord, that 
go golden strain just beyond the green river because it's So shall find rest beyond the real river. I said, I said, I said it. Praise the Lord. Let us bow in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this family. We ask that you will continue to be with them. We thank you for his son. We thank you for his grandson. We thank you for his sisters, his nieces and nephew. And we thank you for all those that he has served with all of those that he has touched their lives. Lord, we just thank you for the time that we had with him. Lord, those moments were precious. And so, Lord, we know that he is now home to be with you. And so now, no more pain, no more suffering. And so, Lord, we bless your holy name. And all God's people say, Amen. So if we would, if we will go turn in our Bibles to Matthew 20, verses 25 through 28. It says, But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to be become great among you, let him be your servant. And whosoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. And if I were to use for, uh, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life ransom for many, So if I can use for a subject this morning, it will be a profile of greatness. A profile of greatness. 
When, when I reviewed or read one of the definitions of greatness in the dictionary, I saw the name Brother Gilbert Franklin Coble Sr. It stated that he was superior in quality or character. He was noble, a great man who dedicated himself to helping others. We know Psalms 84 and 10, I, I like the easy to read version. It says, one day in your temple is better than a thousand days anywhere else. Serving as a guard at the gate of my God, house is better than living in the homes of the wicked. Almost every month, uh, all visitors and and members were greeted by the smiling face of Brother Gilbert, even when his knees were hurting. He, he was in pain. He still stayed at his post at the house of the Lord, which we were so blessed at First Baptist Church of Jericho. When, when we look at what he has done, he has been faithful and uh, we are grateful for his faithfulness. So when we look at the text in Matthew 20, 20 through 28, we see the disciples were like many of us. James and John, the brothers, request that they wanted to a seat at the right and the left of Jesus when he entered his kingdom. Their request suggested that they wanted privilege and power without service and commitment. The other 10 disciples became indignant or possibly upset that they didn't come up with, with it first. And uh, however, Jesus used this as a teaching tool to teach them about discipleship, a, a lesson Brother Gilbert learned. Bro for the first thing, Brother Gilbert learned that all of humanity should submit or surrender to Jesus. When we look at Matthew 16, 24 through 26, it says, Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever desires to have his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit a man or woman if he or she gained the whole world? and lose his or her own soul. In order to experience the Lordship of Christ, you must turn your life over to Jesus. If you totally identify with Jesus and uh, you live according to his agenda, you'll find abundant life that you never knew was possible. What, what, what God is to gain worldly stuff. What good is it to gain worldly stuff and while losing spiritual blessings and peace with God? In, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father, in heaven, how hallowed be thy name, that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not our will, but God's will be done. Secondly, Brother Coble understood that he should obey God. Matthew 22, 33 through 38, a lawyer asked Jesus, what, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first great commandment. Loving God means that we willingly obey his commandments. Ten commandments are, are really a command to love God. It, it, it requires your heart, your soul, and your mind. And it, it, it simply is saying it requires all of you, not some of you, not some time in and some time out. It requires every bit of you. And, and you can't love God uh, one time and love the world another time. It, it, it requires that 
everyone has to be able to love God in the sense, the way that God loves us. God always uh, loves even when we do things wrong. God still loves us. And so we have to have a reciprocal love. We, 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 we all love the idea of being loved. But talk is cheap. And uh, love is expressed about how you obey God and you love God in, in all that you do. Finally, finally, uh, Brother Brother Coble understood if you obey God, you must serve humanity. Matthew 22 and 39 says, Jesus continues his answer to the lawyer, and he said, the second commandment is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. To love your neighbor is the decision to compassionately and righteously pursue his or her well-being. If you want to draw closer to God, help someone else draw closer to God. And, and if you want to be great, if you want your name uh, in the Lamb's book of life, if you want uh, God to say, well done one day, uh, you, you, you have to be able to serve somebody else. I, I, I know we like to get our own props. I, I, I know we like to, to be seen and to be heard, but, but sometimes you, you just got to serve somebody else. It, it ain't about you. It ain't about what you want, but it's what God wants, which is simply to serve. In, in, in the kingdom of God, you you, you reach greatness by serving others in love. It, 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 it's time uh, for us to at least acknowledge what Brother Kobo did. If we can follow suit, if we can, even when we're in pain, even when we don't feel like it, even though people get on your nerve still got to serve. Even though uh, uh, when people come through the door, they have something negative to say. Still, Brother Gilbert still gave you a smile and let you know that it is good to serve God and to be able to serve man. And so it's time for my brother, take your rest from all your labor. Uh, you, you fought a good fight. You finished the race. You, you kept the faith. Now there is sort of for you a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award you. And so I know God said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You, you, were, you were faithful over a few things. You were able to guard the door. You, you were able to usher people in. And so now I will usher you in. And the very little that you did, I will make you give you much. Just because you were faithful servant of the Most High. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. I thank Pastor Gatlin. We decided to do this together. He wanted to yield the floor to me, but we decided to do it together. And the reason why I am here today is because God gave Gilbert an assignment. Before he left here, he gave him an assignment. On every Thursday night, our family is on the prayer line. And I said to him, I said, this is an assignment for you. And that assignment was in the 23rd Psalm. And how are you going to get to that place of greatness? There is an avenue. There is a road that you're going to take getting to this place of greatness. So he said to me, there's others that can do that. I said, yeah, their time is coming. But right now, it's your time. It is your time. And so 
getting to this place of greatness, I thought about Nicodemus and how he took that place of coming to Jesus. He was coming to Jesus. He had to come because he wanted to know so much more. And so when even in his time and being right here, he still wanted to know more, to be in that place of coming to greatness. And so as looking at him, at that, at reminding him, reminding us of the conversation that was there, Nicodemus' mind had to be changed. Gilbert's mind had to be changed. Our minds have to be changed. And when our mind is changed, that calls for a repentance. And so and in that repentance, it means I've got to turn around. I've got a change of mind. And so the times that we would talk, the times that we would have these conversations, the times that he would ask me about the Bible and his theology and our theology. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The more you read the word of God, that theology is going to change. Of what you know of God's word, because it's God's words that we stand on. How he was getting to that profile of greatness, this is how he was getting there. So I gave him, I said, this is what the Father says. And this is the reason why Minister Johnson read the 23rd Psalm, because it was the 23rd Psalm that the Father, not me, assigned to him and said, tell me what you think about a shepherd. Tell me what you know about a shepherd. But in knowing that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so we want for no good thing. I don't care who you are. You want for no good thing because God has already given it to us. He's given to us everything that pertains unto godliness. And so as we went on to read that 23rd Psalm, though I walk through the shadows of the valley of death, each and every one of us will walk that walk. And no one is going to be able to cross over it for us. So in that place of becoming great and it's great. Greatness, that great man or that great woman that God has called you to be. Don't leave this world. Don't leave this place without doing your assignment. So I said to him, come on, let's read some more. And he went on to read some more and tell me what he thought. I didn't realize that he'd also called Betty and said, what do you think? What do you think about this? And so and in that, I said, when he got finished, I said, you did a good job on this. But you got to really know that God is your shepherd. He is your shepherd. He is leading you beside the still waters. You know those waters that are quiet because sheep are some dumb animals. We can, we can be some dumb animals and when we don't want to listen and we don't want to obey what God is saying to us. But you better put your ear to the mouth of God today because pretty soon they're going to be telling you what you need to be able to say. And can you say of an assurance that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I want for no good thing because he's given it all to me. He restores my soul. You were talking about his soul. He restores it. He brings it back he restores my soul and in the presence of my enemies your haters that's where your greatness is going to come in at that you can walk even though your haters are looking at you even though your haters are talking about you but you can still walk you can still serve as he came in this door and sat and served Sundays up until the end the Lord was his shepherd he was his shepherd and so even on that particular Wednesday morning you know, I would have been praying. I would have been right there praying, trying to keep him here. Any of us would do that. But it was his time to go. It was his time to go. And so his spirit said, it's flight time. It's time to get out of here. We're we, we, we going we to get on out of here. And so when I looked at him and I'm saying, Father, I do thank you. Because my love for him would have had me praying right there. So none of us were there when he crossed over. And no one will be with you when you cross over. And you better understand and know that in the presence of God, that's where it's at, in the presence of God that takes us over. It's the presence of God in those moments that will lead you where you need to be. And so his soul is resting. And that's why we can say, thank you, Jesus, that his soul is resting. And he's in peace today. His soul is resting. I believe it today. His soul is resting. And it's been admonished to you to get your soul together. You know that, that mind that has to be changed, that repentance. We can't even talk about regeneration without repentance. You can't shout it out without repentance. And so I know, I know, I know, I know where he is. And even though we will miss him, when we know that he's in the arms of Jesus, and we know that there's no more pain, that he can take that 23rd Psalm, and he, could, he walked with it, he walked with it. And as we shared it, it said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
get into that place of greatness, a profile of greatness, that he was able to do that, able to do that. And so in, in, in my conclusion, it was just for me to be able to come up and tell you that he did have an assignment. And he did that assignment. And I praise God for the assignment. And I give him glory for the assignment today. And what you need to do is what is your assignment? If it's for today, if it's for tomorrow, whatever God is speaking to you, you need to be doing it. Don't go back to him for, go back to him empty. Go back, he was born from above. When you go back, he's going back home. You're going back home, so go back home empty. When you stand before him, go back home that you did everything that you knew that you had how to do. Because he is resting. And we love you, brother. We love you, brother. You're talking about being missed, he will be missed. But this was the assignment. This is why I'm here. So that you would know that God did give him an assignment to do. Even though he might have thought he couldn't do it. But we stand right here. We stand in the grace of God, in the strength of God. When I'm weak, that's when I'm made strong. So it is the grace of God that would cause us to be able to stand here, for his son to be able to stand here, and that we move, we move, we live and have our very being. You got to know that the omni God lives on the inside of you. If you never knew it before, you know right now that the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you as a believer. As a believer in Jesus Christ. And so that's the things that he would talk about. Those are the things that he was learning. And so we're grateful today. I'm grateful that I had that time. If I could be with him in crime, then I could be with him in... That's it. That's it. It's the truth. If I could be with him when he was doing X, Y, and Z, and I was testifying to it, I can be with him when he goes to meet the Lord. That we could talk to him and say, all right, it's time. to you, you, you ready? He said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So we know that he was ready. And may the life I live speak for me. May the life you live speak for you. God bless you. Well, at this time, we're going to offer the invitation of salvation. Amen. If there's somebody here today who does not know the Lord as their Savior, who is not ready, praise the Lord, to go from this space where we are living right here and now into eternity, this is your time to come to the Lord. So with all heads bowed and eyes closed, we're going to ask you to look into your heart and ask yourself, am I ready to meet my Lord? And if you are not, just raise your hand up in the air and put it back down. This is your chance to be right with God. This is your chance to have greatness with our Lord. Is there one? You don't know God, but you want to know God. You want to have a place in heaven when you leave here. And don't mistake, don't mistake it, we're all going to leave here one day. Is there one? Amen, amen. At this time, we're going to call the Bagwell family, amen. Only trust him. Only trust him.
Due to the inclement weather, we're going to commit the body here. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble, comes forth like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and continues not. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor? But thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased, Yet, O Lord, God, most holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Amen. For as much as has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed, made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty workings whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, says the Spirit, for they shall rest from their labors. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that we had with our dear brother. We thank you for his example of the believers in word and conversation and what he did. He was a good father. He was a good grandfather. He was a good brother. He was a good uncle. Lord, we thank you for being, for him being a good friend and a good servant. He loved you. So, Lord, may we love you as much as well. May we serve so that God, when we serve you, we will serve you with all our being. Bless and keep this family. Continue to be there when everybody else has gone home. Tending to their business. God, you will surround them. You will give them peace. You will give them comfort. You will walk them through this valley. But God, you will never leave them nor forsake them. So Lord, bless these your people. Continue to comfort us. Continue to be with us. Because God, we know that you are great and mighty. And when it is our time, you will call us home. But Lord, we want to hear these same words that Brother Gilbert had on March 20th. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'll make you a ruler over many. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Oh, my God.